Hi, welcome back to my channel, Ideas Box. My name is Jimmy, and today I've got a video about a, an adapter that I made to torque up left hand threaded parts with a torque wrench that's not designed to do left hand threads. It's one of the older styles that can only do right hand threads. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the video and let's get on with it. When we lived in the city, uh, we did a lot of cycling. I rode a ride bike to work most days, even when the weather was pretty shitty. Um, and did a few mountain bike races and I was, we've still both got good mountain bikes. And the good thing with having bikes is you get to buy more tools. So you can never have too many tools, right guys? So this is my collection of bike tools. And one thing that I had to make, because I've, I've bought all the special tools for all the bits and pieces on bikes, the bearings and cassettes and clusters and things, but I had to make something to allow me to use my torque wrench to torque up left-hand threads because the bottom brackets on push bikes have a left-hand thread and a right-hand thread to avoid something called mechanical precession, P-R-E-C-E-S-S-I-O-N. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that. Here's a basic demonstration of mechanical precession. I'm going to wiggle this in a clockwise direction and you watch that nut, because it's right hand thread, you watch it come undone. It's going in any clockwise direction. So if this one on the, on the other side of the machine, and it was going, now, now my finger's going in an anti clockwise direction, And that nut's tightening up. It'll get to the point where it'll be it'll be quite tight, and it'll only continue to get tighter. There we go. That's quite tight now. My older torque wrench. Uh, my larger one, the one that I use for the bottom brackets on a bike, is what they call a dual signal. So you set it there, and then when you torque it up, this bar deflects and hits this wedge here. And it's called dual signal because it makes a ping, and that pin sticks out. So if it's noisy, you can see it. But that won't do left-hand threads. It's only can only turn in that direction can only turn in that direction so it can only do right hand threads. This smaller one can do left and right hand threads, which is handy. Um, I haven't actually used this one for left hand threads, but I have to use my larger one for left hand threads. And let me show you how I do that. So in order to use this to do up left hand threads, Obviously I can do that to do up a right hand thread, but on the bottom bracket of bikes, the bottom bracket bearing on this side is right hand thread, and this bottom bracket here is left hand thread, so it needs to be torqued in that direction. And as you can see, with this torque wrench I can't. Obviously I can torque this side easy enough, One day I was standing here with the torque wrench and I thought, how the hell am I going to do this? And I was sort of rotating it around in my hands. And I looked at the arrow and I thought, well, if there was some way I could turn the torque wrench that way, I would be able to torque up this, which has to be a left hand thread. And what I came up with was this. Now it kind of looks a bit funny, but what that allows you to do is, it allows you to use your torque wrench back to front, if you know what I mean. But you have to do this at 90 degrees to get the right torque value, and I'll explain on the chalkboard why. But the way this works is you put it on there, pull it up like that. So it's as simple as that. And that's the simple solution I came up with. Now you can't use it out straight like that because you're changing the moment arm on the torque wrench. The moment arm on a torque wrench is 
from the center of that drive there to the center of the handle, which on this one is 335 millimeters. So if you put 100 millimeters on there, because what I did was I made it with I made it with 100 millimeter centers so that I could do any calculations if I needed to. So what I do is I put that at 90 degrees and it's near enough. And let me explain on the chalkboard why that is. Now the way a torque wrench works is on my torque wrench, so there's the handle, and then there's the length of the torque wrench with your, your deflection bar there and your pin. So the centre there to there on my torque wrench is 335 millimetres. Now if I put the extension on the end here, I've added 100 millimetres to that. And that won't work because that's changed your moment between there and there. So this will be inaccurate. What you have to do is, with mine, I put it at 90 degrees because that's 335 and from there to there is 345 which is like 2 point something percent, so say 3% difference. Now most torque wrenches are only accurate to three to five percent, two to five percent anyway. So that's well within the accuracy of my torque wrench. Now if you wanted to put it out straight, if for some reason you had to put it out straight, in fact I'll give you a good example. Say there's your torque wrench, there's your 335, from your pivot to the center of your handle. Now there's a thing called a crow's foot, which kind of looks like a spanner with a square drive there. And that square drive obviously goes on there. And what you need to know with the crow's foot is that distance there. So, you, so that you can do this calculation. Now what the calculation is, is say if I wanted to get 55 newton meters there, 55 newton meters, you go 55 times 335 divided by 335 plus whatever that is. So if you were to say that's, uh, say if that was two inches, say 50 mil, and then what that gives you is, that gives you, 47 newton meters. So you would need to set you would need to set your torque wrench at 47 newton meters. Otherwise, you'll get an incorrect reading there. But like I said, with mine, because it's at 90 degrees and it's within three percent, it's near enough. I'm not building space shuttles, so it's more than enough for me. So that's what you have to do if you're using a torque wrench with any kind of an extension that goes further from the handle than your than your drive there you have to know that distance so that you can do your calculation and that's how you do that if for some reason i have to do mine out straight so say that's this that's the torque wrench that's the adapter and that's the tool that goes on the bottom bracket it would be because i need 55 newton meters there so you times that by 335, then you divide the whole thing by 335 plus 100, and that gives you 18,425 divided by 435, which is 42 newton meters. Don't, don't be too impressed. I didn't, I worked this out earlier. I'm not working the hours I got. So if for some reason I had to use that adapter straight on my torque wrench, I would set my torque wrench there at 42 newton meters. So here's that left hand thread bottom bracket again from a, from a bit closer up. So that goes on there. You would use the torque wrench like that. And it just goes click. And like I said, 
at 3%, it's near enough. Or you could set your torque wrench to a different value and do it straight like that. But you have to calculate that value. So that, let's get the focus, that is the solution that I came up with to being able to use my old torque wrench to torque up a left hand thread because I don't torque up very many left hand threads to be honest. That thing there is probably the only left hand thread I've torqued and I'm 40 plus a year tradesman so it's quite rare. Obviously if I worked in a bike shop or if I had to torque a lot of left hand threads I'd buy a newer torque wrench like my smaller one which would allow me to torque left hand threads. One important thing with torque wrenches is um, I've just used a small one to torque up the pedal on the off crank side, the off chain side. Now you always loosen them off so it's not under any so it's not under any load. And that's how you store a torque wrench. So you're not loading up the mechanism for no reason at all. One time years ago I was working at a place where we'd assemble some machinery and an engineer came along and he's got a torque wrench and he's checking the bolts that we'd talked up, which is no big deal. I, you know, I don't take offence to that. I don't care if people check my work. But he had the torque wrench set at the same value that we had done the bolts up to. And I said to him, no, aren't you going to back them off and torque them up again? And he said, no, I'm checking that they're torqued up right. And I said, well, you need to know the calculate the, the breakaway torque, which is the torque that you would then need to get the bolt to move again. And, um, I, and I mean, there would be a million variables, um, lubricant on the threads, grease, swarf, and the surface condition of the threads, if they were bone dry, it, there'd be a hundred, hundred different things that would, you would have to take into consideration when calculating the breakaway torque. But I said to this engineer, I said, don't you have to calculate the breakaway torque, or at least try? And he didn't seem to understand what I was saying. And, and I said to him, no, you need to, you, you can't just use a torque wrench set to the same value that we've talked them up to. And he didn't seem to get it. And, and it was really quite disappointing because you think to yourself, these engineers, they're supposedly smarter than mechanical tradesmen. And they're supposedly um, better educated than mechanical tradesmen. But he didn't, uh, he didn't seem to get it. But... I just shrugged my shoulders and walked off. There's not much I can do about that. He's higher up the food chain than me, so if he doesn't know what he's doing, it's not my job to tell him. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, maybe that's something you could make for yourself. Who knows? Um, okay, well, click the like, subscribe, and that notifications bell, and I'll be back soon with another video. Okay, bye for now.